welcome back to my channel um i apologize for this lighting and just the way i'm looking it is currently five o'clock and um five o'clock in the morning and i am filming this in my kids playroom area um mainly because it's five o'clock in the morning but we're also about to get our day started um for vvs is the vacation bible school at our church and my kiddos are a part of that so this is how I'm dressing. This is how I'm going. I've already got myself up ready. So that way I could do this message for y'all. Now, with that being said, um, I want to specify that this message I know is going to be for somebody. Um, I had this message written about a year ago and the Lord told me to wait. And I thought it was finished, but the Lord had me add on um, the last part, which is going to be about him leaving the 99 to save the one. Um, so that was something that has happened over the past few weeks as the Lord has prepared me to give out this message. Um, I feel like I'm a few days late on when I was supposed to give this, but um, I'm going to put it out and let it be. And, and I'm going to show you that I wrote this you know, almost a year exactly, like here in a, about a month. Um, it'll be a year when I wrote this. And I'm going to probably be looking at my notes to read this or to give this message mainly because I wrote it a year ago. Um, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump into it. Today we are going to be talking about the prodigal son and what some lessons we can take from the prodigal son. And then um, basically I'm going to invite you to the end to maybe make the change that you know you need to be making. Um, maybe that's the return to the Lord and getting things straight um, within your life, within your family, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just, we're going to just go ahead and read um, the prodigal son story in Luke 15, 11. We're just going to go ahead and read it. It's going to be a rather long story, so just hang in there with me. All right. Uh, Luke 15, 11 through 32, he says, He also said a man had two sons. A younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the share of the estate that I have coming to me. So he distributed the assets to them. Not many days uh, not many days later, the younger son gathered together all that he had and traveled to a distant country where he squandered his estate in foolish living. And after he had spent everything, um, a severe famine struck the country and he had nothing. And then he went to work for one of the citizens of that country who had sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. He longed to eat to, uh, eat his fill from the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one would give him anything. And when he came to his senses, he asked, How many of my father's hired workers have have more than enough food, and here I am dying of hunger? I'll get up to get uh, to go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against, um, against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired workers. So he got up, went to his father, but while... This, while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and threw his arms around his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father told his servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And then bring the, flat, um, the flattened calf and slaughter it. Uh, the fattest calf and slaughter. Let's celebrate with the feast because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He lost and now he's found. So they began to celebrate. Now his older son in the field, he as he came near to the house, he heard the uh, music and dancing. He summoned one of the servants questioning what, what this meant. Your brother is here, he told him, and your father has slaughtered the fattest calf because he has backed safe up. Uh, sorry. Because he is back safe and sound. And then he came angry and didn't want him to go in. So his father came out and pleaded with him. But he replied to his father, Look, I have been slaving for many years for you, and I have never disobeyed your orders. Yet you have never given me a goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. But one of... But when this son of yours, who devoured your assets with prostitutes, um, you slaughtered a, a fattened calf for him. Son, he said, you're always with me and everything I have is yours. But we celebrate rejoice because your brother was dead and now is alive again and he's lost and now he's found. All right, so that is the story out of Luke 15, 11, 32. And sorry, I'm very tired this morning. Um, so 
excuse my reading there. Um, but let's talk about as, what exactly does it mean to be a prodigal? Well, the Google definition um, is spending money or resor or a resource recklessly and wastefully exaggerant ways. So basically being a prodigal means that you're going out, you're spending your resources, as we saw here, it was his um, inheritance um, in a reckless way, um, basically. But we also see the term prodigal um, come to represent so those who have come back with repentance in their heart, no matter the lifestyle that they chose or the choices that they chose to live before they um, repented. So that's what we see here in um, his younger son. Next lesson is kind of more of a note, or I guess it can be a lesson, and that is we want things before we're even ready for it. I have that fleshly desire majority of the time. You do too. It's a very human nature thing. Um, but this uh, this parable gives us an example of God giving us what we want before we are ready for it, before we are chosen to be able to handle what we are wanting. Um, in this parable, we see him describing a child who has gone away from the teaching and from the training that he was brought up into, which was very godly, obviously. Um, and he chose to basically abandon in those godly foundations that he had set in within his childhood and growing up he chose to abandon that and um, he chose to ask for something that he was not ready for and in order for the in order for us to avoid this happening to us and basically receiving things that we know we're not ready for and just um, blowing it all away we must seek the lord for things and we can um see this in first thessalonians 5 21 which states, but test all things, hold to what is good, stay away from uh, from every kind of evil. And the way that we can do this really is by um, prayer, fasting, seeking the Lord, reading the word of God, being in him daily and, re and very closely listening to the steps that he is giving us to walk in. Because he knows what's going to be best for us. He knows what is ahead of us and he knows how we can um, serve his purpose the best uh, in the best way. Um so basically, just make sure that you are seeking uh, guidance and um, and listening for the answers from the Lord. Now, don't let Satan get up in there and try to trick you on some things. No, um, just make sure that you're listening for the Lord. Um, ask for confirmation. Walk in Him daily, and you will be guided into what um, where you need to be, what you need to have um, to serve that uh, him in that season of life that you're in. All right, so the third final little lesson slash note that we can take from this parable is not everybody's going to be happy about your spiritual growth. That can include your spouse. That can include, can include um, family members, parents, closest friends, etc. Not everybody's going to be happy about you making the change from turning from the world to Christ and serving him. Um, so the best thing, uh, so some things that we can conclude from the story or how we can come to that conclusion is the fact that the older son really represents the Pharisees and the naysayers. And we need to realize that at that time, Pharisees were considered the perfect Jews. They were considered, they were really uh, seen as the most holy Jews. Um, so whenever Jesus really started talking about salvation, that obviously kicked up in them because they were perfect Jews and Jesus was coming along and telling them, no, you're not perfect. You have to accept me. Um, in order to connect with God and in order to have a relationship with the God with God and um, this kind of explains the older brother's behavior in the story because he saw himself as having this perfect relationship that was not only serving the Lord but serving his father and he felt like he was doing all the good things that he needed to do to be this um, holy person and whenever the little brother came along, uh, or when the little brother decided to do what he was going to do, and he returned with a repentant heart, and the father accepted him wide open and making this a big celebration, he got jealous because here he was doing all these things, jumping, jumping through all these loops, and the father wasn't celebrating him, but he was celebrating the one that had went off and done all this and then decided to repent and turn back and looked for salvation. And this just shows that everybody, or not everybody, but some people in your life, even the closest one within your household, is not going to be happy about you making uh, making a turn in your spiritual growth. Um, but if I can just leave this with you uh, before I give you the next Bible verse, um, keep going. Just keep going. You've got this. Like You can do it. Um, you setting that example will hopefully one day lead them towards Christ. Um, if not, then 
at the end of the day, you're still going to receive those. You're still going to get those rewards of doing what Christ wants you to do. Now, something that, uh, that I also wanted to tell y'all that um, you have things that um, those naysayers not uh, may not necessarily have. And one of those is Jesus's peace. Um, he talks about his peace in John 16, 33, which says, I have told you these things so that uh, in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world, but be, be, but be, uh, but be courageous. I have conquered the world. Um, sorry about that. But Jesus did not promise um, whenever we seek him and live in him in this world that we would have an easygoing life. He did not say that. He said, in fact, we are going to suffer. We're going to have tribulations. We're going to have quarrels over the fact that we serve Christ in a very sinful world. And, um, but with going along with saying that, whenever we abide in him, whenever we are doing what he has served, uh, told us to do and we are serving his purpose, there will be a peace like nothing of this earth in your life. And you will have that whenever you choose to make that turn from the world to Christ. Um, so just believe that promise, receive that promise by being obedient and inviting in him um, in order to receive that peace. So the overall message of this parable is that no matter what choices we decide to make or a lifestyle that we decide to live or drain the blessings that the Lord has given us, we will always have a Lord waiting for us, a loving Lord to wait for that wayward son to return to him, to serve his ways, to serve his purpose and to live in him. There's always going to be that choice um, until you go. You got this choice um, that you can make right now. And I wanted to uh, give y'all Romans 5, 8 um, with this. And it says, but God proves his love for us in the in that the way that we are still sinners, Christ died for us. When we decide to come out of the, our sinful lifestyle um, that you are living in, there is an unconditional love that is waiting. There is acceptance um, that is waiting for you within the Lord. Sure, you might have to make some big life, uh, lifestyle changes so that way your lifestyle reflects the fact that you are living for the Lord and you don't stay in those sinful ways. But there is a Lord that's waiting for you, that's waiting to love on you. Just make that turn. Just turn back to him. Just do it. You can do it. It's hard. It's hard making those lifestyle changes. It's hard um, separating yourself from the world. And there's always going to be that temptation. I'm not perfect, but I have a loving father that's willing to walk through these seasons of life with me, through those seasons of temptation. And he, just like he does me, he wants to walk with you too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and transition this over to talking about um, the 90, uh, him leaving the 99, um, to find the one. Um, and this is what the Lord really had me add on to this message. Um, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead and turn to that parable. And I know that that was such a poor transition to this, but, um, really it was the last minute add to this, um, little Bible study. So we're going to be in Matthew 18, 12, um, 14. Let me get there real quick. Sorry, it's going to be Matthew 10 through 14. Okay, so it says, See it to that you do not despise one of these little ones, because I tell you that in heaven there are angels continually viewing the face of my Father in heaven. What, you, what do you think? If someone has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, won't he leave the 99 to the hillside and go and search for the stray? If he finds it, I truly tell you, he rejoices over the sheep more than over the 99 that did not go astray. In the same way, it is not the will of the Father in heaven that one of these little ones perish. So what can we take from the lost sheep, um, him leaving the uh, 99 to find the one and the prodigal son? Well, this is it. The father rejoices whenever the last sheep is found, when the last child is found in return. Um, let me say this lastly, if I can leave you with anything. His sheep know his voice. You know what you heard in this message today. You know what the Lord has been telling you. And John 10, um, 27 through 28 states, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they will follow me. I will give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them from uh, snatch them out of my hands. 
you know what you heard today. You know what the Lord has been telling you, what the Lord has been telling you to turn away from, to make the changes. The Lord has given you many oblivious, or say oblivious, obvious signs that you need to make a turn. You need to have a turning point and you might not have heard it. You might not have, uh, or you chose to ignore it. Um, but at this point in your life, whatever you've been running from for years, the Lord is calling you to face it, to face it and turn back to him. Allow him to fix that brokenness. Allow him to fix um, your lifestyle, that broken lifestyle that you've been living, uh, you've been living, that acceptance that, um, I'm trying to think of the word, or give it to me. Not acceptance, but that little anguish in your heart that is desiring to be loved that is desiring to have an unconditional love that's desiring to have the blessings of the Lord um, and to have those things that the Lord promises us whenever we are older um, you have to at some point decide to face that and you can choose to not face it while you're here on earth you could choose to love this world. You could choose to keep loving and living the lifestyle that's tearing your body down, that's tearing uh, maybe um, relationships. You can you can keep living that. You can keep making those choices, and that's fine. I said it's fine. Um, you're going to still get disciplined for the Lord, but you can make those choices and keep doing that while you're here on earth. Um, you may not face it here while you're on your earth. You may decide to keep running and to keep going. Um, even after you've probably heard a direct, clear message from the Lord, um, that's fine. You could do that. The Lord's going to let you make that choice. But whenever it comes to um, eternal life, you're going to answer for that. You're going to answer why you chose to do the opposite of what the Lord has called you to do. But that's not to say that if you choose to not do that and not to live for the world and turn to Christ and live for his purpose, uh, live for his purpose and flip your life around. That's not to say that he won't um, accept you. He's a loving God. He wants you to turn back to him. All he wants you to do is to respond to this message and obedience and turn back to him. Allow him to fix those things. Allow him to come in and work. Um, and that's just plain and simple. And that's the message that I have today. And I know it's probably all over the place because I'm tired. My reading wasn't that great because I'm tired. Um, and it's five o'clock in the morning. Um, but the Lord had a plain and clear message in this and I hope it gets to whoever needs it. I actually know who this is for. Um, I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying that with a haughty heart. I directly have this message written out for a year now, um, waiting, uh, for the Lord to tell me when it's right. And it's now, and you've heard your call and there's not much more that I can do. Um, or anybody else that can do. It's more of your choices now. You choose which direction you want to go. And that's that's just on you. And this is just what the Lord has had for me. And I, heard, I hope you heard the Lord. Um, not just taking that this is what Katie is telling everybody to do. Or this is Katie's judgment. Because um, that's not it. This is just what the Lord has told me to put out. And I hope you heard it. And I will see y'all tomorrow. Or I'll see y'all tomorrow. Um, forgive me this week. We're a little bit all over the place with VVS. I will be back on as much as I can. And I will see y'all later. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And share this video.